Okay. So, uh, yeah, well, first of all, just thank you. Like, thank you so much for saying yes. And I just adore you so much. Um, (laughs) so I'm so grateful to get to chat with you. That's so sweet. Thank you. Likewise. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks. And, uh, yeah, I want to hear, well, introduce yourself, like who, who you be. (laughs) Well, my name's Christy Slager Salerno. My I added the married name to the former last name, so we have three names now. And um, and I am uh, an, an embodiment coach. I I um, am a, a an actor and artist as well, but mostly now I focus on um, energy healing, embodiment, movement, self expression, helping people heal through those modalities. So yeah, that's just how my journey, um, where my road took me really is yeah. to those things. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. How did, um, how did you end up here? Like what set you on this path? Was there kind of a turning moment or things that led to where you are now and what you do? Yeah, um, for sure. There absolutely was. So I, you know, I was one of the many and one of the many, many that flocked to Los Angeles as an actor, you know, to pursue an acting career. Mm -hmm. And, um, (laughs) and I uh, so loved that journey. And I honestly consider that part of my journey, my acting training to be the real, the first real healing modality I stepped into. Mm. Because for me, acting was such a healing um, thing to do to tap into parts of myself that had been suppressed or that I wasn't expressing or connecting to in my real life and giving myself permission to express those part of, parts yeah, of myself. Right? Me too. Yeah. 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 It's so incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that, you know, actually I was asked by one of my acting teachers to, if I would be interested in heading up a dance movement program at her school. And at the time I felt completely underqualified and like, what, why is she asking me? What what is this about? But I really, really, really trusted her. And my life at the time was such a mess that I was like, it can't get worse. I can't, I can't can't get worse. What's the worst that could happen? So (laughs) I said, yes, I, I started with about five students in my garage in January in the cold and that turned into 10, that turned into 20 and then it moved into a studio and then, um, yeah, and then I've been doing that for 10 years and um, that was, you know, saying yes to that was really just the beginning of this whole um, journey of healing that happened for me. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's how it started. Awesome. Yeah. 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 What were, um, cause I feel, you know, I just resonate so deeply with a lot of the things you say. And for me, there was definitely once I chose, like once I said yes, and like, then the path kind of started to unfold, there was so much self-healing that happened that was then transformed into how do I support others or how do I, you know, include this or like the more that I was able to be embodied and to feel the feelings and create safety and all of those things that we all struggle with. And I think need, um, then the more I am able to teach and to help and, um, support. And so were there any like things that pop out, um, for you, as far as when you, you know, figured out something for yourself or was able to begin to process emotions through movement or beginning to feel safety in the body, um, that then, really helped you support others? Oh, that's such a good question. Yeah. You know, I always joke, I actually, I I would joke with my students. I'd be like, you know, what I'm teaching you right now is the stuff that I'm learning, you know, and it's, I'm teaching you this because I need to learn it. Yeah. And, and that's always what was most alive and most present for me. And so most fun for me to teach. And, um, sorry, I'm going to walk over here. My dog is (laughs) having a moment with our curtains. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and let her out. Okay. So yeah. So um, I, at one point, as I was teaching movement realized, oh my gosh, everything that's coming out of my mouth as I'm teaching is 
every book I've ever read, all of my own self-help, all of the things that I voraciously consumed to peel and help myself is now mm. coming out of my mouth. Yeah. And it's like, oh, little did I know I was studying and training for this. Yeah. And that revelation was like, so I wasn't wasting my time yeah. reading all those books. <laughs> Sitting in those coffee shops, being angsty, you know, writing in my journal. Yeah. It was so much, you know, self growth. And I've, I've always been magnetized towards, you know, spirituality and connected to, to spirit. And I, and that's always something that's been of interest to me, but, um, you know, and just the heart and healing and all of that. So it was so interesting to then think that I was getting into, you know, movement coaching and um, acting co or acting movement, act, uh, sorry, movement for actors thinking, oh, I'm helping these actors, you know, be actors, but really I was helping, it, it's a healing modality. I was helping yeah. people. Um, well, I'll just say this, what was happening in those rooms when I was teaching, um, what I thought was just going to be a lot of fun getting into the body and expressing oneself turned into something so much deeper that I did not anticipate and did not um, plan for. It, it felt like um, at some point I kind of reached the end of myself and I, and something else was coming through that was beyond me. What was happening was what these people in this room needed at this time. And it wasn't because I planned it and it was my idea. Yeah. It was because these people's bodies had so much wisdom for them. And here in this space, this stuff was starting to arrive. And mm -hmm. I, that blew my mind. Cause I was like, Whoa, I didn't, this is not, I didn't know this is what I was watching. Into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So then it was like learning as I was showing up, you know, it was yeah. like, it's funny. I, I used to, in the beginning of teaching, I was so nervous. I would almost like throw up every morning before I went into, <laughs> I like couldn't keep my breakfast in. And I, I would have like a plan, like a meticulous plan, like five minutes of this, like to the minute, like this minute, these minutes, minutes, minutes. And it got to a point where I, I, I would run into these moments in class where the next thing on my plan did not, would not work with what was happening in the room. And I knew mm -hmm. it. And then I would freak out momentarily in my head. And then I just have to let go of my plan. And I'd be like, help, help, help. What, what's next? What's next? You know? And, and I would just like call on the divine and something would come. Yeah. And I, I began to learn through desperation <laughs> <laughs> to trust those moments mm -hmm. of getting to the end of me. I don't know what the hell to do. And then opening up to what wanted to come. And that was, that's where I got hooked. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I love how you articulated that because I have felt that like I've felt when I can just let go of what I'm trying to do or what I think should happen or what I have had planned. And I can just drop into my body and drop into the other bodies and what is already organically naturally unfolding in like this relational field mm -hmm. and just open up to and listen deeply and trust. Then it's like, it's like you step into like this, like magical realm, like this magical place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I can tell that you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is. It's this magical place that's, I think it's what people feel like in any modality or, or, or craft or art where they're in the flow, like they're yeah. in that state of flow, they're connected to something bigger than them. It's, it's where you just feel so, it, it feels so right because it's not, it's no longer my ego driving me. It's, it's a surrender instead of a watch this amazing thing I have planned for you. You're just yeah. going to love it. Instead, instead it's like, <laughs> I'm going to trust this 
that the right thing is that the right thing for this moment and these people is going to arrive in this in this room but I have to get out of the way for that to happen yeah exactly yeah mm-hmm. I um I've worked with a, a coach and mentor for about a year and she was um prepping me and teaching me and you know we were going through all this stuff and then at the end she's like and basically all of this is just so in the moment you can just get out of your own way and just let it flow through you because that's what happens and it's oh. like Whew, it, it takes a lot of like, it's that jumping off, it's that trust, it's that just flying, you know, and the more that you do it, the more that it feels um, not safe, but like, like juicy, like, mm-hmm. you know, you, the, you're more willing to dare and to trust and to follow and you build that self-knowing. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's really a relate. You're right. It's that tr- the trust part is a huge, huge part piece of it. Yeah. And I think it took me quite some time to fully trust that because I was very much wrapped up in my controlling tendencies. And, but then once you taste it, once I tasted it, mm-hmm. it was like, Ooh, wait, this is, this yeah. is much more fun. <laughs> yeah. This is way better. <laughs> Yeah, way less stressful, much more fun. I mean, it's it's stressful in that moment of I don't know what the hell is next. That is yeah. stressful. Yeah. But once you start to trust that moment, you know, and practice being in that moment, yeah, then it's oh, it's a move coming. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> um, yeah. I was uh, I was listening to another podcast that you were on, and you uh, you said a couple things that just really blew me away and resonated. And one of the things was, um, who you really are is in your body, not in your mind Mm -hmm. when you were speaking about embodiment. And I feel that is so true on my journey. And then also like what I've seen in others. And so I'm curious, like when you're working with other people, like, do you begin to start to see them become more of themselves Mm -hmm. and like what that process is like? Because I just, I love it. Oh, I love that question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, oh, yes. Yes. So, oh, man. Um, so many of our, you know, we have all these ideas about ourselves, you know, and um, our, our ego story um, is our comfort zone, right? It's like what we know ourselves to be. And, and that identity talks a certain way, moves a certain way, wears certain clothes, says certain things. And it's great. It functions for us. It helps us survive in the world. It's our, it's, it's nice and lubricated and just kind of can get us through all these things. And Mm -hmm. it's a great thing to have, but it's also a limit, right? It also, it also is a, is a container that only allows a certain amount of us, a certain part of us or parts of us to be um, expressed Mm -hmm. and what happens in movement class and this is again something I didn't plan but something I began to see and then it taught me you know what was happening this is what your class is about Christy this thing okay got it Um, (laughs) I would see as people began first of all they were given permission right in this space to move their body in a way that's outside of that comfort zone, outside of that identity, Mm -hmm. which first of all is extremely scary and has to be so honored because of the courage it takes to move your body in a way that is awkward for you. That is risk. It is risky to that identity, right? So when you're invited to do this, it's, you begin and you begin to do it right you begin to move just beyond that comfort zone um all of the sudden parts of you arrive that have been there the whole time but maybe but but we didn't know it because the story we were telling ourselves is the story of the identity that we've already created Mm -hmm. right i for instance i'll use my my old one i'm a really nice girl and i Mm -hmm. you know am happy and and kind and I I'm a, I work hard and I'll always be supportive and you know blah 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 whatever and with if I start exploring movements that are beyond that 
that are, what if I explore really fast, quick, angry, could be interpreted as daring, you know, sexy movements that are outside of that good girl, mm-hmm. right? There can be some fear at first. There can be a lot of things, right? A lot of feelings can come up because of the stories we've attached to those parts of ourselves, right? Like that's not allowed. That's too much. What, what messages we got as children about those parts of ourselves. So as you expand your body into those movements, you begin to reclaim and give permission to those parts of yourself to come back. Yeah. And that, I mean, that is incredible. I also feel like you asked me a question and I totally went off on a different, I don't know no. if I even answered the question. No, that was it. That was, that was totally it. Like the, like getting to really reclaim and like to get more of you. Like, yes. I feel like we're all longing and craving that, right? Like we can, yes. our bodies can feel like that there's a disconnect or a dissonance or that we're fragmented or, you know, that we're just not like everything's just kind of like separate in these little pieces and we don't really have access to that, that, and that's where that, you know, that idea of like, I want to be whole. Right. And it's like, well, we we are, we just, it's just getting those parts and feeling them and letting them express. Um, so yeah, no, you answered it beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so well said. That's it. That's, that's the path to wholeness. Right. And that's healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I'm curious if you've seen some kind of through lines with stuff that comes up, like the blocks, like that when, like the fear or whatever it is that wakes up that, that really gets people stuck or that is challenging or, you know, some common kind of shapes or contractions that we hold. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, it's really interesting because our, our, our fear stories um, our inner critic stories, mm-hmm. um, as personal as they feel to us, they are universal. Yeah. And that is something that, oh my goodness, this work has so taught me because, you know, we usually, you know, in the process of a, of a four week session, one of the first things we'll handle or we'll face is our inner critic voice and what it's saying to us. And it's really interesting because as people share those stories, <laughs> it's all the same stuff, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. you're too much, you're not enough, yep. you're, you know, people are going to laugh at you, you know, you're, you're, um, yeah, you're, you, sh- you should be more this, you should be more that. It's yeah. all very, very, very similar. Yeah. The and too then, much and not enough, I feel like, or are like, the, those are like the big, like, two, 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 whatever. And not, 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 whatever. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So these are, these are the big ones and they, and it's interesting how they, how they actually imprint in in the body, Mm -hmm. you know, um, for a lot of people, you know, I would say the most common places of restriction that I see in the body would be sort of the chest area, the heart center area. Um, actually for men, I see that much more. Yeah, I was just about to ask mm-hmm. if there was a difference between men and women, yeah. Yeah, I've been really blessed to have, I mean, I, I would say maybe 60, 40 men, women, men. So I've had, a, I've had a lot of men in my classes and I think honestly, because it was marketed to actors and to help actors, you know, I think, Interestingly, I think more and more men are getting into this kind of movement work, but I think women really flock to it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but over the years, you know, I think so, so often in men, you know, the heart center is very, has been really limited in how it's allowed to express. Yeah. And that's so sad, first of all. But that, so that's a really common place of restriction. And then, and then for both women and men hips hip area mm, yeah right where like sexual organs are where our, you know creativity and our femininity live and um so really you know opening those places up um has a really profound effect but you know every time you begin to move again like a part of your body in a way that it's not used to being moved mm-hmm right away 
you, you release the story, right? The story comes up and it will, it'll come right up. Oh my gosh, you're not, you're not allowed to do that. That's too mm-hmm. much. You're being too sexual. You're being too vulnerable. People are going to see your heart. They're going to yell at you, whatever it is, right? right? So the stories come right up and that's what's so magical about the body and why you can move so fast on the healing journey when you access the body because the stories are right there. Yeah. Right. If you're sitting in a, a chair in therapy, you're not moving. So the mind can just tell whatever story it wants to tell over and over again with, without necessarily connecting to the root or to the, to the root wound that's actually being held emotionally in the body. Yeah. So to me, when you can start to really move your body, those stories are going to come right to the surface and there's your work. Right? Mm-hmm. There's what I need to confront. You yeah. Know? Yeah. The body is such a powerful access point. I mean, I realized that, you know, on my journey, cause you know, I too was an actor and I loved being, having the permission to feel. Cause I was like, Oh, I can, Oh, I'm allowed to be angry. I'm allowed to be sexual. I'm allowed to be all these things that I'm not allowed to be in life. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I moved into yoga and did yoga training. And there was something about like moving my body on the mat that just felt so healing. Mm. And then I went through, you know, talk therapy and like all of the things. And I really began to find like, oh, it's always the body. If I can, (laughs) if I can come back to the body and let this energy move and like, it doesn't even really matter what the story is anymore. If I can just begin to feel and Mm. contain that energy and move with it and like, all of the things that can happen. And I think it's so cool because we all have one of these. So we all have this access point. We all have a body and yeah, it's so, so healing. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it's funny because (laughs) I don't know about you, like, as far as when you discovered how, how amazing this, this body is. And, And as an access point, I love, I love that term. It's really beautiful, but I know for me, so much of my life was really me like dragging my body around and Mm -hmm. forcing it to do the things that it was supposed to do. You know, there was, I had such an antagonistic relationship with my body, which I think so many of us do, especially in sort of an imbalanced patriarchal culture, right? Where Mm -hmm. intellect and logic and performance are the things that are praised more than, you know, the internal, you know, the, the nurturing, the connectivity to the feeling part of ourselves. Yeah. So, so yeah. So for me, so much of my life was like forcing, forcing my body to do things. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Weigh this much, Mm -hmm. only eat these things, Mm -hmm. you know, exercise like this. I don't care how you feel. You're tired. I don't care. You're going to work anyway. Yeah. Um, it was pretty much how much can I ignore my body? Mm -hmm. Um, which of course led to all sorts of physical, emotional, all the problems. Um, so yeah, when you can start to befriend Mm -hmm. the body, um, I mean, the wisdom available there is, I think, uh, I mean, there's a reason why it's body, mind, soul, right? There's a reason why they're put together in the same triad, right? Mm. It's not mind over body and it's not uh, to me, the body is is simply a servant to the soul, but mm. it is not a servant to the mind. Mm. It is equal, if not, in my in my opinion, <laughs> greater than the mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I yeah. think. Yeah, I I can definitely relate to the dragging the body around. Uh, And also like just being at war. Like I hated like I that like there was like hatred and also deep distrust. I'm too emotional. I can't trust my emotions. I can't trust what I'm feeling. Like, you know, my body's betraying me because it's, you know, whatever feeling this way or and especially like being sensitive. It's like I just oh. Yeah, just so harsh and mean and like, don't feel that and you should be this way and that way and like, what's wrong with you? And yeah, that befriending path is like so important and building that trust again with, no, like this is my experience. This is what's true for me Mm -hmm. and letting go of, well, it should be different. It's like, well, this is what is. (laughs) Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> yes the shooting the shooting oh man yeah the shooting all over yeah uh, all over yeah. the place 
Um, yeah. When you were speaking about like the heart center um, and like the hips and stuff, if somebody was listening and they were like, oh my gosh, yeah, I definitely feel like there's probably, I feel like tight there and constricted. And yeah. uh, I don't know if I feel like ready to like take a movement class. So that seems like yeah. scary. Like, what would you say to someone who's interested, but has all of those, mm. you know, stories about, I don't think I could do this and what difference would it make and yeah. all of that? Yeah. Um, that's, you know, that's such a, that's, you make such a good point in that sometimes people, I know, you know, can, can see a movement class or the idea of, you know, oh gosh, that looks like dancing or that looks like, whoa, that's way beyond what I feel comfortable with, which I, you know, I think is, I totally get it and respect. Um, always, always, you know, when it comes to to trying something new or wanting to free a part of you, yourself that you feel restricted in. You know, one of my recent teachers, she puts it this way. She's like, sip, sip, mm. <laughs> which means just a little, just a little yeah. bit at a time. I love that. You don't need to jump all the way in, right? You can just, what if you just joined for five minutes of the class and then you went away? Or what if you just watched it? Or mm. what if you just, yeah, what if you just um, started by breathing into your chest or even bringing your awareness into that place that's tight? Just that yeah. is, is a sip, you know? And um, I have to say, I have to admit, I was, I've been really guilty as a teacher, especially when I started out, I was really guilty of, of often, I think, pushing people too fast, too soon. Mm. Um you know, is part of my learning journey to, to really learn the gentleness necessary and that everyone is at a different place, you know, mm. on, on this journey. And we all hold different stories and different traumas in our bodies. And um, so really it's such a, it's such an individual unique journey to each person. So I find that part of the journey is acknowledging that you are the only one who knows what's happening in your own body and mm. you are the authority of your body yeah no matter who the teacher is no matter what they're saying to you you know what feels okay and safe and you know what doesn't and how much of that unsafety or discomfort you are, are ready to step into and how much you're not and for how long so yeah. I think really giving yourself the trust, like that's part of building that trust with your body is I'm totally. not going to, I'm not going to force you to jump off the cliff. I'm only going to, I'm going to ask you to take two steps. That's it. And if we want to go back after that, that's fine. Right. Because we don't befriend our bodies when we force them into something that's totally way beyond just too far beyond yeah. the comfort zone. Right. We have to just little sips. Yeah. Yeah. I love that analogy of little sips. And it's also something that people that we're often not told, like it's that permission piece, like you have permission to go slow, you know, because a lot of times we join a class and we're like, okay, you gotta push through, like no matter what. And like, we have to finish this and everybody else is having this experience. So I'm going to, you know, push myself to have that. And it's, I feel when I'm facilitating, like constantly reminding people like, no, like, you know, what is right and true for you. And that is all that we are practicing and building here. If you only leave with that, that is gold. So just listen. And it's, and it's moment to moment because some days it's like, oh, I could take like five bigger steps. I could be in my uncomfortable, you know? Yep. And like some days it's like, nope. Mm -hmm. And then that you're listening to the body and you're honoring it and you're starting to to really heal in that relationship. And I've heard you talk about the, 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 your relationship, like you with you, which is yeah. something that I speak about all the time. And yeah. I think that that's, that's really like, you know, I mean, tell death, you do you part. Like that's right. the, that's yeah. the relationship we're in. Yes. Oh my gosh. So much wisdom. And exactly. in what you're saying, absolutely. It's, um, you know, I, I, I can speak for myself. I used to, you know, really see the world in such a goal, goal oriented way, right? Like, like yeah. we have to get to the top of the mountain. We have to do, you know, check off the list. And <laughs> no, we don't. We don't do any of that. <laughs> and, 
and what what's really what's really nurturing like yes it's fun to get to the top of the mountain yes it's fun to check off the list sometimes if that list has fun things on it but whatever that's a side thing um but what what the thing that i have found that is the most um rewarding is is the the journey and the the, yeah, the relationships you build with yourself on that journey and with your body. Yeah. It's the ultimate goal. If there has to be a goal is, is loving and trusting yourself, having a mutually trust, a mutually trusting and loving relationship with your Mm. body. Meaning not only that you trust your body, but that it trusts you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You being the consciousness that lives inside of it. You being the, the, you know yeah the the god if you will within Mm. the temple you Mm. know yeah so yeah are you being a tyrant to the body to the temple or are you being you know a loving a loving source you know Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and being a good parent to to like all of the young parts and pieces that inevitably come up right like you go to go I'll get empowered and like yeah and all of a sudden it's like shame is here and loneliness is here and it's like okay well then that's what I get to relate to today right yeah. oh yes yeah. I love that too yes the reparenting and like yeah those little sweet parts of us that just need compassion and love and want to be accepted again yeah yeah Yeah. all right I gotta think of I gotta slim it down um (laughs) because I could just talk to you all day literally literally all day um (laughs) so as someone following in your footsteps, um, mm. like me, who I think, you know, I just look up to you so much, um, oh. who's, you know, on this journey and really loving embodiment stuff and movement and, and trying to support others. Like what, what's some advice that you would give somebody just a little bit down the road from you? Mm. Oh, advice. Um, um, I tell them to be leery of advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell them, um, yeah, to trust that your light will find its, its people. Mm. It will find, you know, to shine your light and know that that's, you know, being able to mm, to do whatever it takes to take care of yourself to the point that you are able to shine your light in a genuine way, right? That your self-care, your healing journey, your the balance of in, of your life is is the most important thing, mm-hmm. right? So that when you shine your light. Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, getting, capturing, finding the people that, that, that is going to, the the, the right people are going to see that they're going to see it and they're going to come to you and, um, and just to put it out there, Mm -hmm. you know, because I think we, we're scared and we question ourselves and am I ready? Am I enough? And all of that stuff. And, um, I can tell you right I can tell you right now I wasn't ready when I started I wasn't ready I wasn't I didn't think I was enough I didn't think I, I was totally imposter syndrome all day I had no this was not my training this was not my background um and yet it's kind of what I was always doing yeah without knowing it right and mm-hmm. so that's where it's kind of you know it's just following your path and trusting your your journey and your inner wisdom and truth yeah mm, life will a be a teacher answer. you know oh yeah life will tell you when you're <laughs> you're hmm, maybe that wasn't the right way to go about that <laughs> you'll you'll know <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh. Um, what are some of uh, your personal practices, you know, that really support you and just live in life and daily life? Mm, these are good. Um, I, uh, it's been such a journey for me as, as a uber 
over planner. Um, I've really had to, I've done a lot of work to heal the parts of myself that um, need to perform and only feel lovable when I, when I am achieving, you know, a, a list of 27,000 things a day. Mm, yeah. So, oh my goodness, I've, I've come a long way in that. And what I, what I, what really works for me is to have some sacred time at the beginning of the day. And that might be meditating, journaling. Journaling really is one of the modalities I feel rescued me from um, an eating disorder, from really was one of the first ways in which I became aware of my own feelings, mm. that, that I have feelings and that they matter, you know? Um, so I still journal most most days um, in the morning and I, I'll meditate in some way, but I'm not rigid about it like I used to be. <laughs> I used to be like hour long and timer and we wake up at 6 a.m. And, you know, there's all these, these right ways of doing everything. And I've, I've really been working on healing those wounded, the wounded masculine, I call that, right? Yeah. The, the parts of our culture that are very like force, forcing myself to do things instead to to really li- try to live in this balanced place of the healthy masculine holding a container for things that are good for me, but then allowing the, the healthy feminine energy of creativity and fun and joy and self-expression and the feeling to play within the container. Totally. So, it, so it's not, yeah, so rigid. And I have found that now, you know, I'll do three or four things on the list, maybe. And, but the most important things for me are to move every day in some way um, and to allow space for myself to feel. So that might mean that I just go be by myself in my room and feel into my body, like what is here. I, you know, I don't, I, I, I really try to tune in to my body and let it express whatever it needs to. And that can look really ugly and that can look really um, beautiful. But these are, again, like you said earlier, all these little parts of myself that just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. Um, And every time I do that, you know, I have this, I have the analogy of this like sort of, white knight in shining armor who is this he's the healthy masculine he's holding space right and he's like Mm -hmm. you need to go sit in your room and feel (laughs) so Mm -hmm. i'm gonna hold this space for you and then my the feminine comes and is like (laughs) i'm mad at this and i'm mad at you know and then like all the allowing these feelings to come however they want to come maybe i'm Mm -hmm. on the floor maybe i'm dancing maybe i'm just in my bed crying or in a ball or whatever it is and then you know, when I release that, always, you know, there's always some beautiful clarity. Um, So yeah, I would say some sort of spiritual thing, spiritual time, journal time, maybe um, movement. Um, I try to get outside every day. Um, Nature's like, just automatic connection to, you know, soul. So yeah, those are, those are the things I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Nature for me too. And moving my body. And I love the, just having space to feel like just having that space. Um, and knowing that you can take the time and, and just let whatever unfolds. Yeah. I love masculine feminine energies. That's something that, um, actually really brought me into this work because I did a workshop that was very much with masculine energy and feminine energy in your body and feeling how those energies feel and learning your unhealthy masculine and your Mm -hmm. unhealthy feminine and, and figuring out how to dance and play with all of it. Um, And so I love that you brought that in because yeah, for a long time, I was very much the unhealthy masculine. Like mm-hmm. you get up at five thirty, and from five thirty to six thirty, you do this, and then you take a cold shower, and then you exercise, and you. And like, yes. oh my god! 
I'm only laughing because I so resonate. I, yeah. I could have I could have had the same list. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah very much. And now it's like, no, I just give myself that sacred time in the morning and it looks different. And it, you know, unfolds in whatever way it unfolds, but it's listening and having it come from the inside instead of like, I have this list and I have to do what it says. And my value is very much wrapped up in whether or not oh. I do these things. Yep. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, you know. Yeah. When you mm. get me started I, on <laughs> how, and you know, it's interesting. I will say this. I'll put a positive spin on this. I really think the world is changing in this way, or I'm seeing more and more people wake up to this. Like, wait mm -hmm. a second. I think COVID was a huge blessing in this way and that it, in the stopping of the, the train, yeah, that it kind of mm, gave us time to question yeah. how we're showing up in the world and why do I have to do all these things on this list and do, do these things even make me happy and mm -hmm. what am I doing? <laughs> Where, yeah. What is this mountain I'm climbing and do I even care about what's at the top and what about what's here now? Like, I do feel like, this has given us a, an opportunity to ask those questions and yeah, I, I, and heal some of that. But yeah. For sure it has for me. I know. And I, I love hearing that, that the masculine feminine is how you kind of came into this, this work. I think that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's magical, incredible work. Yeah, it really is. And it's, um, it's so liberating to, to learn like, oh, I can, I have, there's so, there's so much more possibility within me. There's so much more, you know, energy that I can work with and just different ways of being with myself. Um, yeah. And I love what you said about the, yeah, I feel like the pause that we were all forced to take really like had people be like, what matters to me? What do I care about? What am I doing you know yeah. and yeah. there was a lot that you know came from that of like oh this is not the life I want to be living but there's so many yeah. people I know and myself included that a lot of stuff was like yep that's just we're gonna yeah. let that burn because that's yeah. no longer what I want to do who yeah. I want to be yep yeah yeah but the pause what a blessing the pause is and that's why honestly so that's like a mac on a macrocosm right we had this huge pause but it's like, okay, how can I pause every day? How yeah. can I pause every day? And, and, and I guess that's kind of what I've tried to do by removing a lot of this stuff from the list and these huge expectations, right, of, of achievement every day. Mm -hmm. Can I just, you know, because what feels really good to me is like, you know, being there for myself. And when we take a, a, a pause every day just to check in with the body, then we get to, um, you know, feel into what's true what's working for me what's not working for me what do I need to 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 feel or express to someone or to myself yeah and that just creates a richer life and again befriending of the body yeah and living true to yourself yeah like that's it's, it's everything <laughs> amen <laughs> amen <laughs> Well, I'm going to wrap it up with a couple last little lightning round, I guess is what people would call it. But um, I, love it. I feel like I could probably talk to you for Ugh. a long time. Me um, too. You're like kindred spirits. We have a lot. We are. I feel like we're like similar paths. Yeah. I feel like we're um, estranged sisters, yeah. you know, like in a Shakespeare play that the twins were like <laughs> set apart on the islands and we're coming back together. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, what, what is that? What Shakespeare play is that where the brother and sister are twins? What is that? Um, it's because Viola, right? Viola. Viola. Um, yes. Twelfth Night? Yes. Oh my God, I'm so impressed. You oh, see, that. there's that theater That's degree. That, no, is. I'm putting it to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Oh. I'm impressed with that. That's impressive. Thank you. <laughs> um, what advice would you give your 12-year-old self? Oh. Hmm man I say I, I made that sound because that was that was when I was 12 was when my eating disorder started and I mm -hmm. remember the moment I decided um I I have to be the best and it was from a place of um deep heartbreak <laughs> that I wasn't a boy and that mm -hmm. I wasn't going to ever really be able to play on the, the real field in sports. Um, 
So I would tell that that little girl that I would go so far as to tell her she is a goddess mm. and she is more powerful than she'll ever know. Mm. Yeah. And that to trust that and to follow that path. Yeah. Whew. You're making me feel all the feels. <laughs> My 12 year old self's like, yes. Yes. <laughs> I've known it all along. Why didn't you see it? <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, what is embodiment to you? Mm. Embodiment to me is mm. it's why we're here. Mm. We came into bodies to come into bodies. Yeah. And it's so often misunderstood or it's so often misunderstood to be human um there's so many you know spiritual teachers and you know or, or the spirit spiritual idea that we should transcend the body or that the body is you know something to transcend when well then why did we come here you know, mm. we were spirit before why would we come into a body just to please it again right to me, the body is literally why we're here. It's it's what it, what teaches us. It's 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 here to to bring into the physical physical reality who we really are in spirit. So it is the transcendence hmm. to be in a body, yeah. and and to bring our divinity into the physical into physical physicality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, that's such a good answer. <laughs> yeah um and then last I'm just curious of what you're up to now like what is true for you what what are you currently diving into or dealing with or excited about or moving through like just what what is true and current for you mm. true what's true and current for me is um I'm always, always learning. I'm really, right now, I'm, I've been taking a course in somatic embodiment, which has been from a, tra- from a trauma therapist who, who's a, a somatic embodiment therapist. And she, also, uh, she does such incredible work. Her name is Dr. Linda Tai, and I'm obsessed with her work and the space she holds. Um, I that's her work is very present to me and how I can bring it into what I do. And um, I'm in this vulnerable stage of, of rebranding what I'm doing so I can bring it to the world in a way that, you know, um, is accessible, you know, to not just the physical in person, you know, classes. And I've, you know, you know, I've been experimenting with like YouTube and videos and everything since COVID happened. So yeah, I'm just experimenting with with the possibilities in that realm. Um, and really just learning a lot of um, a lot about how to mm, so many lessons happening <laughs> um, <laughs> to to really um, gosh, learn how to, 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 to be in my, re- in, in relationship, um, uh, in the present moment, not bringing past <laughs> traumas and stories into mm. relationships and, and transferring them onto, for instance, my husband or the people I'm with to really be present with, um, with the, with, with what's really happening and not coming from my place of woundedness. Mm. And that's a big one. And then also, again, this sort of marriage of the masculine and feminine and the, the healthy versions of both. And um, that I feel like is probably, you know, that'll be a lifelong practice for me. Mm, yeah. Um, but that's been so healing. And what woke me up to the need for that was how clearly I could see the wounded masculine in the world 
mm-hmm. and point at it and blame it for so much of the misery of my own and the world. Um, but then realizing that the humbling realization that I'm only seeing that because it's inside of me and mm, the, the deep need to heal that within myself. Mm. You know, yeah. So that I'm not putting that out in the world or part of the problem. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big, that's a big one. Through, a lot of things. Well, and I'm curious just a little bit about, because I really resonate with the relationship about mm-hmm. not bringing in like the mm-hmm. past wounding and bringing the past into the present. What is, um, mm-hmm. what is like one piece around that that's been really supportive for you or that you find really works in, in the moment or in a practical way with your partner? Yeah. Um, getting, the biggest thing is getting in touch with what I need and being honest with myself about my needs. Um, part of the wounding for me is there's definitely wounding around speaking my needs. Mm. Um, that's the vulnerability of that and not trusting that that will be met. And so therefore disowning or not even being aware of my own needs and then expecting the other person. (laughs) Are you reading my mind right now? It feels like you're reading my mind. (laughs) I didn't tell you I'm, I'm telepathic. Yes, I'm not kidding. I, I, yeah, expecting the other person to somehow know. And then when they don't, to get furiously angry and defensive and project all sorts of, you know, unsafe stuff onto that person. Mm. When, you know, I think, you know, this is a wounded feminine, right? The martyr, the victim, right? Is you know, that's very present, especially in a world where the wounded masculine is, is very present, right? Mm. So the wounded feminine arrives where, right? She, how does she get her needs met? Oh, okay. By, by, by manipulating or finding ways to not tell the truth and finding ways to get her needs met without really being honest or whatever that is. Yeah. So for me to like actually get in touch with okay this is the the need and to then cleanly ask for that mm. that's a grown-up task that I'm done yes. with. <laughs> yeah that is an edge for me and then and then to be met in that and then yes. to be like then then receive receives my word for 2021 because <sighs> yeah whew, receive such a good word yes <laughs> it takes it's it, it it's a, it's dangerous. It, it feels dangerous in the body to receive. Yeah, it sometimes. does. It's scary. Yeah. yeah. Cause you're not protecting yourself. You're not, you know, you're just, you're open and you're open. vulnerable and, and you have to be deserving and all that, you know, there's, I mean, there's yeah. a big worthiness piece as well and all that yeah. and mm-hmm. receiving and yeah. 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 But I love that tuning into what you need because mm-hmm. oftentimes I, it took me a long time to even know what the heck I needed. So like giving yourself time to first for you find out, okay, what is the need? And then to speak it clearly out there. Yeah. 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 Because how many of our unconscious behaviors come from these unmet needs Yeah. that then, right. That then we go about getting in ways that are not really fair (laughs) or (laughs) straightforward, you know, for, for, for the other person they can't really meet us when we don't speak and um mm-hmm. so yeah this is this is a big one for me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh so much juicy stuff thank you thank you so much is there any last things you wanted to say or any other questions that I didn't ask that you want to speak into or anything oh, else man. No, I just had such a fun time. This was such an elevated, fun conversation. You really hold such a beautiful space. And mm, like, I just you. feel really joyful about it. And it was so heart filling. So thank mm. you for letting me be here. Awesome. Yeah, of course. Come back anytime. I, I could talk to <laughs> I you anytime. To. <laughs> it's like, it's like talking to uh, a, a like a, a different version of me, you know, like I yeah. see myself reflected in so many beautiful ways. And like, yes. it's so, like you said, heart filling, like I feel, feel very full. Me yeah. too. Me mm-hmm. too. We'll definitely have a part two. Or, yeah. And so on for sure. Yeah. And so on and so on.
Well, yeah. thank you so much. Okay. Thank you too. All the best. Yeah. Have a beautiful rest of your day and weekend and all of that. And yeah. I will. You too. Thanks. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye, sweetie. <laughs>